YouTube, what's good? I'm back with another full poster design process. Now this one is a cyberpunk brutalist design style. So I'm gonna walk you through every step I took in Photoshop. So let's dive straight into it. Okay, so this is the poster that we're gonna be working through. It's this kind of dystopian future with these like tech themed visuals and characters. Then this has been paired with this grungy Xerox effect. So I'm gonna walk you through all of the steps of how I've colored it, of how I've textured it, how I've created it. Okay, cat's just jumped into a box. Gift time. <laughs> so let's come up to file and new. Now I'm gonna use 3840 by 4800 pixels. Make sure that resolution is 300. Now this is important for using the effects, so assure that that's there. So I'm just gonna drag in my first image here and we're gonna be applying the effects to this image. So first of all, I'm gonna to need to make sure that the image is set within the canvas bounds. So I'm gonna keep it at this size for the moment. So now in order to actually apply these effects, I've been using Deron's ultimate grain pack, his Xerox effect. Now I will link this in the description below, but it's effectively some actions to save you some time in Photoshop using the filter gallery. So you can see over here, I've got his action packs. So I'm gonna come onto Xerox light and ultimate grain, and then on basic color, I'm gonna make sure that that one's selected and then press the play button here. Now, obviously I have my actions panel set up here, but if you don't, then come up to window and actions just here and then just apply it whenever you want. So on basic color, I'm gonna hit play here and it's gonna prompt me to select my dark and light balance for my images. So I'm gonna come on to continue and then it's gonna take me into the filter gallery where it's applying the effects. Now this is combining a few effects to create this grainy look, very high detailed and kind of like gritty. So I'm now gonna change my light and dark balance on here. I'm gonna set it to around four or five, I believe. I'm gonna set it to four, actually five. So now on five, with this set, I'm then gonna hit okay. And immediately you're gonna receive another prompt, open group and double click the thumbnails of the color fill layers to change colors. So I'm gonna go on continue and it's gonna immediately filter all of these layers into a folder. So I can then open this and I'm gonna see here, clearly labeled, I've got fill color and shadows color. So on my fill color, I'm gonna set this to a kind of bluey tone. Now I'm gonna go a little bit darker on the blue, make it somewhat of a pale blue. So probably around here is good, set that as okay. And our shadows color is gonna set this background. So let me uh, reveal this, double click on this, and I'm gonna set this to more of a darker blue to the point where it's almost like a dark gray or black. And now from here, viewing on the original, you're gonna see there's a lot more color involved in this. We've got a flat color on all of these surrounding details. And then on the lighter areas, I've also created a highlights layer. So when I hide and reveal this, that's when you can see the flat colors input. So in order to create this highlight layer, I'm gonna duplicate our fill layer and I'm going to remove the mask. So now I'm gonna rename this to highlights and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to select and color range. And now I need to make sure that all of my filters are removed for this. So let me just hide this entire layer, double select that highlights again, or just click on the highlights layer, select color range. And now I wanna use the eyedropper tool here to select the highlights in the image. Now this is automatically gonna like reveal all of these areas. You can see that on this little preview here, we've got the light areas are the revealed ones. So I'm gonna drag my eyedropper tool around until I feel it's revealed. So I'm gonna set the fuzziness to around 120 and then hit okay here. And now immediately it's gonna select all of these highlighted areas. So now on our highlights tab on our layer, we're gonna select mask. Now this is gonna mean that the highlights have now been isolated onto a new layer. So when I change this color, it's gonna change them. So at this point you can do so much with different colors. You know, you can make the highlights a bright red. It gives like an interesting look. Play around with all of these fill values. You don't even have to use solid color. You could use gradient fill. You could add in anything that you want with this. It gives you a lot of creative freedom. So I'm gonna stick with a bit more of a, uh, just a white, just to kind of go with this blue theme, just make it look like a genuine highlight. And I'm just gonna set it to solid white. Now I'm gonna play around with our fill color. Maybe see if I can get a bit more blue into it. Now that's cool. Keep playing around with it. And I'm gonna settle just here. So now there's one last step on this. I wanted to create this visor. I wanted to have a red effect rather than just being this solid blue color. So I'm going to duplicate my highlights layer. It doesn't have to be the highlights one. It can be any layer with a color fill. That's all I'm really looking for here. And I'm gonna remove the mask. So now I'm gonna add another mask and just set it as solid black so that everything is hidden. And then I'm gonna change this to whatever I want my visor color to be, which is red. And then simply press B to get my brush out. And I'm gonna just reveal this strip and you wanna use a hard brush and not a soft brush for this because otherwise you're gonna see a little bit more pixel detail that is not gonna work with the effect. So I'm just gonna paint in this visor. There we go, now we've got this nice red visor and we can add on some more kind of like glowing effects to that later on. Now with image one complete, I've just made a few layer adjustments just to make sure that it's all organized. So I've deleted any copy of the image and I've just taken our base image, dragged it into the folder and then highlighted all of these colors. Use command option G just to create a clipping mask. And the reason I do this is so that when I change the size of this image, we don't have color fills around the outside. So if you don't use the keyboard shortcut, command option G or Windows will be control alt G. 
just right click and select clipping mask here. So now image one can get labeled here. And now for the time being, we can just hide this. I'm just dragging in image two now. So make sure we do the same thing. Make sure that it is fully within the edge of the canvas whilst we apply the effects and then we can resize it. So once again, same step. I'm using the Ron's Xerox basic color here. So in the folder, I'm gonna come onto basic color and then press play. We're gonna get the same prompts. I'm gonna set this light and dark balance to the same value as before or around the same value just for visual consistency. So I believe it was five before or six. I'm gonna go with eight. I think eight looks quite good here. So there we go. Select okay on that. And now we're gonna have the same kind of steps where we're gonna to have to adjust the coloring and the highlights, but that's fine. And then on fill color, I'm gonna copy the hex value of our old one and paste it into our new filled color. Shadows color, I'm gonna repeat the same step. And now just following the same pattern as before, what we're gonna do is duplicate our fill color layer here, remove the mask, and now we're isolating the highlights again. So I'm gonna rename this highlights, copy the color over, paste that one in. Now we need to make sure that when we're trying to isolate the highlights, we can actually see the original image. So I'm gonna hide this whole folder so that we now have the original image. And then with our highlights layer selected, come on to select and color range. Once again, just use the eyedropper tool in the lightest area of the image. So now with this selected, press OK, come onto your highlights layer and hit mask. And now when you reveal this again, we've now got our base color, our shadow color, and we've got our highlights as well. Now just applying the same step with the visor, just create any duplicate layer of any of the color fills, because all we're looking for really with that is just a color fill layer. Change it to the visor and then just mask it out simply again. Remember, just use the white brush and just draw it in. Now we've got our images sorted with the effects applied. So now I'm gonna reveal image one and hide image two. So now we're ready to actually organize the composition here. So I'm gonna make this slightly bigger until it fills up the width of the canvas and then drag this down slightly. And I think this composition works so well because it's got this kind of diagonal look that leads you from bottom left to top right. And this kind of framing of the grunge effect around the outside just works perfectly with composition. So it's just gonna re-render these filters here and now we're gonna reveal our second image and work around with this placement. Now in the original, I've gone for the bottom left and I thought this worked with the kind of like contrast and shadows of this. We've got this kind of dark area in the bottom left that also doesn't frame over the original figure. So I thought this worked quite well. So I'm gonna settle this in the bottom left and then to actually get the perfect placement, we're gonna create a grid setup just so that we can organize it well. So I'm gonna come up to view, guides, new guide layout. And this is the setup I was using for this. Went for a 150 pixel margin, eight columns, 10 rows. So let's settle with that. And now from this point, I can just use the arrow keys just to shift it within the grid lines. Okay, so now in the corner, loving the placement. Now we just need to make a few subtle changes just so that the color and contrast works. So for example, in this part of the image, I think this, this top right area is just a bit irrelevant. I don't think we really need it. It doesn't really add anything and it just creates these kind of weird shadowed areas. So on this whole folder, I'm gonna create a mask and I'm just gonna paint out this area that we don't want revealed. Okay, now with that out, we can work in the same kind of thing. So I think that this kind of uh, square area on the bottom gives me the same kind of kind of irrelevancy with this. And now hiding this, we're gonna notice that we have uh, some more weird areas popping up from behind. So now it's just the same case of, we're gonna get our first image folder and we're gonna mask out the areas. So this whole hand I think doesn't need to be there. And now don't be alarmed by the transparency because this is a simple fix of, we're gonna take our shadow color from either of the images, copy the hex code, and now we just need to paste that onto the background. There we go. So now our background field, it's now retained as our original shadow color. So once again, we've just got this thin line behind. I think that's fine there. I was gonna mask it out, but I think it makes sense. And now with this image, I'm also gonna get rid of that small dot. Any kind of like stray dots could be a good way to get rid or a good point to get rid of. But I think for now, in terms of image and composition, this works really well. Now if our image is done, we can just move on to the title and adding in the paragraph text and body text and whatever else we wanna add. So now with the title, I'm gonna add in our typeface here. So I'm gonna create just a text layer. I'm not gonna create a text box. Now this is gonna give me a little bit more freedom with organizing it and I'm gonna type in Sentinel. So initially I typed it out and I really like this typeface, which is propagate. So initially I typed it out and I thought the kind of length of the word it doesn't really have any optimal placement, or at least I could find. I did play around with a bit more of a vertical option, kind of going up this side. And I kind of like this, but I thought it was a little bit too tight to the image. So my next step then was, can I break it into lines? So I'm gonna use the syllables and just work it into three simple lines. So just holding shift and enter. I thought this worked a lot better without sacrificing readability. And then I can just use these grid lines to begin playing around with placement. So I'm gonna set the sizing to like 110 and then maybe slightly reduce our 
leading here. So I'm going to set it as 110 for the moment and then just increase it from there. There we go. So now play around with these grid lines. Once again, like for me, I'm not sticking to them too, too strictly. Like if this for me visually works better than before when it's lined up for grid line, I will use that and that's fine. Move it over, play around. And I think just zoom out and just quickly fire it around into different places. And I think one of them will stand out to you or it will just stick and look better than the rest. Working with the contrast, if I'm getting most of the lettering to be against a black background, that would be ideal because it reads a lot better. So for example, here, it reads a lot better than here because of this blue line going through it. So let's settle it, let's say around this area, let's just shimmy it around a little bit, see if we can get any better options. I think that works for me. Quite like the placement. It kind of aligns somewhat with the top of this image. Again, I wasn't really aiming for it to be perfect in alignment, so that's fine. And then I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna type in the two words, the cyber, and then I'm just gonna scale this down and this is going to come, it's going to scale this down and then this is going to become a small little text element before the title. And there we go. I'm going to make sure these two are aligned, which they are. And ideal. Now we can just add the paragraph text in. Now I'm simply just going to paste these in from the other document just for the sake of saving time because this is not very complex. I've literally just got two text boxes added in some all caps type and just duplicated it into another text box. Everyone can do that. So now I've set this as a darker color and I'll tell you the reason is because I want most of the attention to be on the images and the title. And I think if there's another big contrasting white box in the blank area, a lot more of your attention is brought towards that. So I wanted to dim it down a bit to make it a bit more of a, uh, a slightly more hidden element where you can read it once you've seen everything else that's important. So I'm going to set that as okay here. And now with the placement, I've just lined them up with the left hand margin. Now I'm just gonna group these, name the folder subtext. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the two titles. Just name that title. What I've done is I've grabbed the line tool and I've created this long stretch of line and then I'm gonna create one aligned with the center of it that's slightly thinner. Now this for me is just adding to the kind of tech theme. It's uh, giving the same sort of visual effect as a, as a heads up display. So I think it fits in the subject of the poster. And the reason I'm placing it here is because in terms of contrast, it adds some more contrast in this area without taking too much attention away. So whenever you see the red cross, immediately you can go into the text and start reading that. So I'm just gonna play around with the size of that. And I think where it is for me is completely fine. And then I might actually move this along with the subtext up slightly. There we go. Now I can just group these lines, call it cross. And now at this point, I can add in this visor effect. Now, very simply, just create a folder or create a layer over image one. I'm gonna eye drop tool our red color and I'm just gonna paint a, let me make sure that my brush is on soft round just here. I'm just gonna paint in a red line and now I can set this to linear dodge and it turns the opacity down and it's just gonna be a simple red glow. So now when we zoom out, we've got a little bit more of this kind of like glowing effect on the visor. Now I can just turn the opacity down a bit more. So it's just a nice little subtle effect. Now hopping back onto the original here, we're just assessing what we've got left to do. Now I can see that we've got this texture on the text as well as just general texture overlays. I'm also noticing that the color is slightly different. So I'm just gonna copy this fill color and I'm going to adjust this on our images over here. So that fill color can change, this fill color can change, and there we go. Now it's gonna look a little bit darker, which is fine because we're gonna add the texture layers, which will kind of brighten it all up a little bit. So now to create this textured effect on the text, I wanted to create a little bit of depth to it to start with. So on my title folder, I'm going to open this up and on one of these text layers, I'm going to add in a drop shadow. Now I'm gonna set this drop shadow value to white and then I'm gonna keep duplicating that. So you can see I've got a lot of saves already here. So I'm just gonna delete these. Now we're gonna set the opacity to 100 and set the size to two. So now everything else should be zero. And I'm gonna press this plus here just to duplicate it. And I'm gonna keep doubling the size value until we start to see it peeking out a lot more. Now you can see already it's getting a bit thicker. So we're gonna settle there. And now we're gonna copy this layer style and we're gonna paste it onto our Sentinel title as well. Now this is just meant to be kind of like a subtle depth introducing effect so that we've got a bit more uh, kind of like leaking around the outside to kind of mimic an ink bleed. And now with these both collapsed, we're gonna come back onto our title folder and create a mask here. Now with this mask, I'm gonna set it to black because I wanna completely hide the title. And now we're gonna use a textured brush to reveal it, creating these kind of like stippled holes in the text to create this distressed look. So now I'm gonna press B to open my brush out. And now I have a few preset brushes that I've had for a few years now and I Wish I could tell you where I sourced them from, but it's been so long that I'm not sure. It may be this. So on special effects brushes, it says Kyle Splatter brushes. Kyle Spatter brushes. So I will try and find them. And if I can, I will link them in the description. But they are effectively like stippled paint brushes. They're really good for blood splats. And so if I was to create a new layer and just show you, you can click and drag or just dot them over. And it's kind of like a randomized pattern each time. So on my title mask, I'm gonna increase this in size and I'm gonna make sure that the color is set to white. And I'm just gonna drag 
and paint over this title. And I was gonna create this really clean, distressed look around the outside of the text. And it's gonna just give it a little bit more detail and add to the whole grungy theme of the poster. Now I'm gonna repeat this same step on our subtext folder. And then once again, I'm gonna make this brush size a bit smaller and then just hold down, click and drag over it. Now what's good about this and painting it on is that it's manual every time it's not, it's just giving that really randomized effect, how you would get it similar in analog work. So it works really well with this distressed look. And now to add in our final texture overlays, we're gonna make sure that our top layer is selected and then I'm gonna press paste in here to bring this one in. Now this is a paper texture from Design Syndrome, which I'll link in the description. I use this one a lot. It's a great PNG texture. So it's very simple to apply. You just change the opacity most of the time. So I'm gonna put that down to 30% and then bring in our second texture, which is select text. And this is from Deron, similar to who made the action pack. I'm gonna set this layer mode to overlay. And then immediately you're gonna think, okay, that's ridiculous, it's too dark. And this is where you can use levels to adjust it. So I'm gonna set our opacity down to 50 and then open up my levels tab with Command and L. Now from this point, you've got shadows, midtones, and highlights. This graph is gonna tell you where most of the color is in the piece. And what I want to do is drag the two sliders together to increase the contrast between the shadows and the midtones. So I'm gonna drag the midtones in and you're gonna notice the piece is gonna get lighter and then play around with these sliders and you're gonna get a nice fine balance where you can see the texture peeking through. So you can see this kind of like really faint diagonal lines. And this is why I've added the drop shadow in because it applies so well onto that. So get these values to where you like. I might increase the opacity here to something a bit higher, maybe around 70. And there we go. Now we've got two really nice texture layers applied. And the last thing to finish it off is I'm just gonna add in a curves layer just to play around with the light values. So I'm gonna increase that and then drop the midtone slightly and increase the highlights. Now this is just gonna help with contrast. So you can play around with these sliders again. I might actually make our shadows darker for contrast. And there we go. And there we go, this is our final design. And you can see it's overall, there is so much texture involved from the Xerox effect to the text masking and even adding in your own custom highlights and steps like that. So I hope that you found this useful. Now guys, as always, thank you for making it until the end of the video. I hope that you can learn something and you can add something to your own design process. Now, if you wanna see more videos like this and more walkthroughs and tutorials, YouTube's gonna recommend you another one just here. So go over there and watch that and I'll see you over there. <laughs>